All right, so for this video, we're gonna show how I built an enclosure for a 3D printer. Um, in this case, as you see here in action, is the Monoprice Mini uh, Select. But uh, this was actually built for the original Prusa i3 MK2 that I have uh, that is finally shipped, so it should be in within the next few weeks here. Um, so I'll go ahead and kind of walk through the build components, um, what I printed out for, this, you know, for the different parts and whatnot, and then how we assembled everything to go together. Um, in addition to a filament storage rack that I built using kind of the same uh, methodology. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build components. All right, here's so we have some of the base components for the enclosure. Um, basically, if you go on Thingiverse, you can find all kinds of, um, you know, plans and whatnot to basically build an enclosure utilizing an IKEA lack end table. Uh, these things are very inexpensive. They're about 10 bucks a pop. And so basically by taking two tables and stacking them on top of each other, you can build a nice little enclosure that also has some storage space uh, directly underneath it. So what we can see here is the two tables and then some of the parts that I printed using the Monoprice Select Mini um, to basically put the, put the enclosure together, including the corner brackets, uh, some hinges, a handle for the acrylic, acrylic door, and also some door stops. That are, they're going to have some magnetic um, latches to keep the door shut. And here we have a close-up, uh, again, of those 3D printed parts, including the uh, grommet for the filament to come through the top of the enclosure. And so the first step was to basically utilize a hole saw to cut a hole for this grommet in the top. Um, pretty simple to do so. Uh, and again, it's actually two grommets, one for the top and the bottom of the, that surface there. And here we have the um, acrylic panel and the corrugated uh, plastic that is utilized for the side walls and the front door of the enclosure. Um, you can use eight, one eighth inch um, acrylic, but I chose to go one quarter inch just because I wanted it a little bit thicker so the front door wouldn't be quite as flimsy. And so that's what I decided on, on utilizing for this build. And here we have just kind of uh, me laying out the measurements for the LED lighting that's going to be utilized along the top, uh, basically the ceiling of the enclosure to give me kind of uh, you know light all the way around uh, the 3D printer, um, basically using an LED light strip, and then I'm going to wire the, the different uh, pieces together and have it you know, running out to a 12 volt uh, DC um, outlet to, uh, to power the, the lighting itself. And here we show uh, basically the same thing just after the soldering work has been done, um, also leveraging a hot glue gun to hold the wires down. Um, the LED light strip itself is adhesive, but the wiring I wanted to make sure kind of stayed nice and snug to the top of the enclosure there. So with that done, I went ahead and installed the legs um, to the lower part of the lac table and then attached the other lac table surface as the bottom and then leveraged those corner braces um, to basically support everything using some small wood screws and also attached the acrylic panel using the, the hinges that I printed out um, earlier. And overall, here's a little, little snippet of what it looks like without the corrugated, corrugated plastic um, along the outside of the enclosure just with the acrylic panel itself. And this just gives you a quick idea of what, what it looks like with the plastic along the outsides. Um, and again, kind of the level of brightness you get with everything kind of combined um, within the enclosure. And here we have my Raspberry Pi attached to the bottom of the enclosure. Um, basically, this is running um, Octopi, which is a print server that manages your, your printing process. Uh, very, very handy for things like um, uploading uh, G-code files directly from the web interface and also remote monitoring. Um, basically, I can port the, the webcam image through and monitor it remotely if I have a print going that's taking a few hours I want to check in on it. So really handy, and I just have it, I have it latched directly underneath the enclosure here, um, nice and safe. And here's just a kind of uh, final you know, photo of everything assembled and inside. Um, you will notice that the legs, although they are not, I did cut the bottom legs down a little bit so it would have more clearance underneath my workbench. Um, it is still tall enough to have one of those IKEA storage bins slide underneath. So any various 3D printing supplies I have actually still slide underneath. And again, that conceals those cables that were back behind there. So uh, works out pretty good in that regard. All right, so now that I have the enclosures built, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So starting off, basically I built this to go underneath my, um, my workbench here. So here we have the, uh, the enclosure completed. But basically uh, what we have is um, I also utilized an acrylic panel for the front. Um, I printed out some hinges and a handle as well as these little stops 
that um, are basically just magnets. There's a magnet on the stop, and then there's a, a metal washer here on the acrylic, and so that's how it snaps shut nice and tight. And then um, if you can kind of see up here, we have these LED lights operating as kind of our, our workspace um, for you know, our workspace lighting. Um, there is the LED, there is that um, also that that webcam sitting there in the corner that will be mounted up top somewhere around here once I get the Prusa installed but I, I don't yet know like how far away I need to be or what my focal point is so I'm gonna wait and do that once I get that installed um, from here I have running out USB to a Raspberry Pi 3 which is behind the unit I'll show you here in just a second running Octopi to control the prints um, and again with the mini I have the print spool down here but what I'll be doing with the Prusa is a little bit different. So if we go back on top, you can see I have this, uh, this grommet cut in the top of the, of the panel here. And I have this little rotating um, kind of spool jig. So basically what happens is I'll put the spool on top of this, and I'll run the, sp the uh, filament through this little hole and down. And that would then attach to the Prusa because the Prusa has a top feeding you know, extruder. So that'll work out well for that. And then, Let's take a look underneath here. I have it set up to where it can hold one of these IKEA storage bins, which is some various 3D printing supplies. And it is a bit of a mess underneath here. So you can see under there, I have all the cables kind of, <laughs> not really tidy, but bundled underneath there, but they're out of sight, which is ideal. Um, that little white that little white plug with the blue light, that is basically a, a Wi-Fi enabled power outlet. So there's an app on my phone that allows me to turn on and off the entire uh, the printer, the Octopi, uh, Raspberry Pi, and the uh, the lighting um, all via a phone app. So that's pretty ideal there. And yeah, if you can see up top here, there is the uh, there's a Raspberry Pi running Octopi. That's my basically my, my print server. So it's still accessible from there if I ever need to like tie into the HDMI to actually see something, change any settings, it's all accessible from that point. And the last thing I wanted to show that has to do with the enclosure here is this. And so basically I use the same concept. This is an Ikea bookshelf. Uh, I'm just using it for various uh, tool bin storage and stuff like that. So, um, but an Ikea bookshelf and I use the same, same hinges, same, same stopping points, and then uh, the same handle. And I also went ahead and, and basically lined it with this uh, weather stripping to make this internal part kind of like an airtight seal. I mean, not airtight, but close. Basically, same, same principle applies. Um, I have this little piece of wood here that stops the, the filament rolls from, from coming out. And they're all stacked within here. They all have their little um, uh, uh, liquid or you know, moisture absorbing packets inside the spools. So there's quite a few of these inside here. And then there's also uh, this little rod for these smaller filament samples and stuff like Ninja Flex that comes in a smaller spool. And that's pretty easy to pop on and off if you need to. But very, very simple to just grab a, grab a spool of filament here and pop it out and throw it on the printer. So it looks pretty nice. like how that turned out. And again, just uses magnets and washers to attach everything. But that's that's the rundown. That's the basic uh, idea I, I kind of uh, saw online and modified a bit for um, storage of both the filament and a housing for the printer itself. So hopefully you guys like it. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Thank you.